G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video I'm going to be setting up um, some extensions on my Pop! OS operating system. But first of all I wanted to have a look at one extension in particular. So the developer behind the popular GNOME extension uh, has quit. So that's uh, big news for Linux customization fans for the Arc menu GNOME extension. Um, Andy C is the creator and lead developer of Arc Menu, a highly customizable, uh, customizable application launcher for the GNOME shell, and one of the most popular third-party extensions available for the platform. He's announced his decision to quit on GitLab in an issue titled Arc Menu Development is Stopping. So it says here, the question is why? And the reason why is GNOME's shifting sands. He explains that most extension developers have had to play cat and mouse to keep up with all the new changes in the GNOME. In GNOME, the rate of progress and change in GNOME and its ARCs code base 2 made it extremely hard to keep pace. Hard to keep pace and hard to keep enthused. So why is the question? Because it stopped being fun. And they were his reasons. The shifting sands and the hard to keep up. I suppose if he's got a full-time job and he does this on the side, I'd have to think. Yeah, nobody wants to be playing cat and mouse with um, updates and things like that all the time. So this project started solely to scratch an itch. Explore an idea or flex some skills. The balance is weighted differently. Um, for Andy, he simply feels he's no longer enjoying what he was doing and it felt like work, not a hobby. So there we go. If there's any positive news here, it looks to, to be that uh, fellow developer Andrew Zek takes over maintainership of the add-on. More details on the next chapter in Arc Menu Story, including the extension's new home on GitLab and owner on the GNOME extensions website will be shared soon. So somewhat ironically, this news comes a few days after GNOME developers launched a new initiative to encourage and support its extension development community, i.e. by providing better documentation, warning of breaking changes, and so on. Well, I would have thought they would have already been doing that, but obviously not. So that would make it pretty hard for the developers for sure, because I do know using GNOME in the past, not so much today, I don't know how these developers keep up, to be honest, but it used to be a, a lot worse because if, if every time there was a intermittent release with Ubuntu or with GNOME or something like that, sure enough, these a lot of these extensions didn't work and you'd have to try and select a version. So if you went to the extensions page and you, know, you, you went to Arc Menu and you wanted to install it on the latest version of GNOME and, and I'm talking probably a, a year or two maybe a couple of years ago now but then you'd be um, searching for the version if they had a version for it and that would be you know if there was no version there you couldn't install it on so if your GNOME version was 3.4 say and there was only a 3.38 here you couldn't install it just depends whether you're running Arch Linux which was up to date and all that then that could have been a problem for sure, but I know I, I I experienced I experienced those things in the past, um, trying to look for shell versions for extensions and couldn't find them. And I can't remember in what scenario that was, whether I was running an intermittent Ubuntu version or I think it was when GNOME used to put out an ISO for their own uh, distro themselves, but they don't do that anymore. I think they are now, but it's not the same thing as what it used to be. So the write-ups there, I'll leave a link to that, or it's on OMG Ubuntu anyway. Um, fairly simple to find. If you just run through OMG Ubuntu, you will find um, the heading there, um, wherever it is, dev behind popular name extension quits. So there's still light at the end of the tunnel anyway. It looks like somebody else is going to be taking that over, so that's pretty handy. So that's um, the story behind the Arc Menu extension. So let's check this out. So we're going to do a search for Arc Menu. This one here, let's install that. Toggle that on and install. And that should be right to go. 
Now let's just check out the extensions. There's the Arc menu, so manually installed. So um, let's have a look in Pop OS. It shows you the manually installed extensions and the ones that are built in. That's pretty handy. I like that. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is install dash to panel. I don't mind the dash to panel extension. It can uh, turn the uh, GNOME desktop into a very familiar looking desktop. So there we go. We've got the dash to panel and down here we've probably got um, is it arc menu. So that's the arc menu there. So that's the extensions installed. Let's just have a look at the extensions again. The manually installed ones. Arc menu and dash to panel. I'm not really sure if you can have arc menu working without dash to panel. I've never tried that. I've always used it in conjunction with one of the dashes, either dash to dock or dash to panel, but these days mainly I, I use dash to panel. So this is the arc menu. So let's have a look at the settings and see what it is set on at the moment. Menu layout. So this has changed a little bit, this menu here. Let's um, full screen that. Menu theme. So you can override the theme. So what theme do we have at the moment? That one there. Let's override that. Don't think it'll... Oh yeah, it's changed. Okay. Let's turn that off. Uh, what was the options there anyway? Border size. Oh yeah, there's a whole heap of options there. Let's leave that off for now. So menu layout. So we've got traditional menu layouts. And if we have a look at these, we've got the arc menu. Um, the Brisk menu, which is from the Budgie desktop. Whisker menu, which is from XFCE. The GNOME, GNOME menu style. The Mint menu style. And the Budgie style. Yeah, the Brisk menu, that was from not the Budgie desktop. Uh, that was from uh, the Solus Mate desktop that Ike um, developed uh, purely for the... Um, Solus Mate desktop, and then you got the budgie menu there. So if we go back, that that was the traditional menu layouts, and you got the modern menu layouts: Ubuntu Dash style, Plasma style, Togni menu. I haven't heard of that one before. Windows 10 style and a Redmond menu style. Then we got the Touch menu layouts: Elementary menu style and Chromebook menu style, simple menu layouts, simple menu style, simple menu number two style, launcher menu styles, K runner, the Raven style, Raven extended, dashboard style, gnome dash style. And then we have alternative menu layouts, the Raven menu style. So that's some um, Let's put a few of these styles to the test. So that's the um, the Arc menu itself, which is um, has a lot of similarities to probably the Windows 7 menu, I would think. I think menu, Windows 7 used to look like this. So you've got all programs. So you can run through these and click back. I'm pretty sure that's how Windows 7 works. Then you've got um, whatever it, um, is um, in current use, you have settings here. You've got pinned apps, bottom, flip layout horizontally, avatar icon shape, circular and square, disable user avatar. So flip layout horizontally. So what's that do? Let's check it on. So now you've got these on this side. Okay, yep, all right, so it flips it around. Search bar location, top or bottom. So there's the search bar there. You can put that on the top. Yep. And pinned apps. You've got category list. Frequent apps. So pinned apps. 
All right, that's a bit of a favorite, I think. I think that comes under the favorites sort of section, that one. So let's go and change. So there's the arc menu, that's what we have currently. Brisk menu style. Um, yep, pl apply button here, that would help. <laughs> okay, so that's um, gone out of that category there. So there's the brisk menu style. Log out, lock, power off, settings, software. And then you've got your categories here. So you have to actually click on them for them to work. Uh, there's probably, now you've got the settings here is for the current menu. So what do we have here? Category activation, mouse click and mouse hover. So now it'll just change as you hover. So it's got some really good um, selections here. You can flip the layout, search bar, you can change as well. Whisker menu. So there's the whisker menu. And the bar is on the top. So if we change that, uh, put the search location at the bottom, and then you can flip that as well. So you got, uh, that's how I normally use it in XFC, so you can access these straight up. So if it's the other way around, normally what I find is I go over to here, and if there's menus that come down here, I sometimes hit these, and I miss out on my uh, favorites here. So yeah, that's just a little thing personal thing for me anyway. Gnome menu style. I like the way it jumps out of there and brings it up here straight away to the uh, setting selection. That way you know it's um, been actioned. So activities overview here. Handy. And that's a fairly simple gnome menu there. Settings, not many settings there. Mouse hover, mouse click, flip, oops. So that's flipped around. The mint menu style, I think a lot of people would be familiar with the mint menu style. There you go. Your favorites down the side there. Your categories here. Doesn't get any more simple than that. And a lot of options here. Change, modify, move up, move down. Okay. Mouse hover, search bar, bottom and top, flip it. Okay, so that's the mint menu. Budgie style. Budgie style there. Looks a bit like the gnome one, I think. Tweaks. Flip, enable activities overview shortcut. Yep. Okay, so that's the traditionals. Let's have a look at the modern. Ubuntu dash style. Right. Home. So you've got all your shortcuts there. Files, software, downloads, documents, and home. Shortcuts here. Pinned apps. Let's have a look at the tweak. Default screen, home screen, all programs. Okay, so you can change it to that. So you've got a, a grid style menu there. Disable menu arrow. Enable weather widget. Where's the weather widget? Oh, you got a favorites here as well. What's that? Favorites? Categories? Okay. So you can go to categories as well. That's handy. Enable clock widget. Maybe I have to close that for those to take effect. I'm 
I'm not sure where the clock widget is and the weather widget. I'm not sure where they are. We've got the plasma style. So you've got that there. You could probably f uh, have to think you can flip that to be more traditional. Activate on hover. Show, activate, uh, show application descriptions. Selected button, border color. No, so you can't change that. So normally, I think in Plasma, these are on the bottom. Pretty sure. Togni menu. I haven't heard of that one before. So you've got a whole heap of um, favorites down the side here. And these you have to click through. So you can probably change that in here. Flip flip the layout, disable avatar, uh, avatar icon shape, but there's no, can't, you cannot change whether you hover or not. Windows 10 style, so you got the um, icon grid as well, like in Windows 10, you've got a menu here, favorites. Oh, so you can run through that menu there. Username, documents, settings, and power off. And some, oh yeah, they've got them here as well. And you've got some pinned apps, I would say. Look like pinned apps. And the only um, settings we have for that is to change the avatar from circular to square. And then we have the Redmond style. It's interesting, Redmond. That's a um, icon grid style as well, but you've got the categories um, where you've got your... It's an icon grid with some shortcuts down the side here. Activities overview, um, log out, lock and power off. Some settings. Very, most of the settings are very similar anyway in the menus. So that's the Redmond style. So that's under the modern. Um, the touch styles, we've got elementary menu style. So that's an elementary menu style there. Check out the tweaks. Search bar location can go top and bottom. That's all you have. Okay, it's an icon grid style as well. Then you've got the Chromebook style. It's the Chromebook style there. And we have a look at the tweaks or the settings. Search bar location only as well. So that's the two touch ones. Then we have simple menus, simple menu style. That's your simple menu. Very responsive, nice and fast. Very traditional indeed. And nothing to tweak there. And then you've got simple menu style number two. Oh, so that uh, opens up your categories under the heading of the category. So it opens up. So that opens up your applications under the heading of the category. So that's how that works. There's no hover. Let's check out the settings. Nothing to, nothing to tweak at all in that. So that's the simple menus. Then we've got the launcher menus. A K runner. So yeah, you click that and K runner starts. I don't know if it's got a. So you got a shortcut to the arc menu settings there. Tweaks. K runner position, top, centered, centered. Is that in the middle? In the middle of the screen. Show extra large icons with app descriptions. So we'll put that on top anyway. So I don't know if there's another way of um, starting this K runner menu besides clicking that. 
So we typed something in uh, K Runner here, Firefox, say, for example. Yeah, and we've got some other files down here as well, some from the Pop Shop. Files. So you've got some headings there as well. That's quite nice. Um, let's go to Pop. Pop Shop, USB flasher. Um, got some files there as well and stuff from the Pop Shop. Let's go files, search for files. So we've got um, files, file manager, text editor, audacity, and some files here, a part of the system, I would say. Escape to hide the menu. Now we've got, we have got a tweaks here, K runner position top. Um, yeah, we have looked at that, but we've got show extra large icons with app description. So let's see what that does. Uh, Firefox. So now we've got descriptions down here and we've got, oh, we've got uh, file paths as well. So I was looking through my, um, yep, some of those are on my uh, data partition, which is mounted. So it's searching that as well. That's pretty handy. Um, so these are from the pop shop. These are through files. And these are the applications, obviously. Um, let's try files. Files. Well, that's pretty handy, isn't it? Look at that. Some under files, some under the pop shop. So that's quite good. Uh, let's do a search for simple screen recorder. And yep, so the top ones are the apps, and then you've got a heading of files, and then you've got some from the pop shop. Raven Extended. Well, that's a new one. I haven't seen that one before. That's quite nice. Raven Extended. Hmm. So that's a Raven menu extended to the whole screen. Very interesting. It's got search there as well. Very responsive. Categories or some shortcuts here. What do we got? No tooltip. Oh, that's over here. Screen, home screen, favorites, frequent apps, accessories. So as you can see, that tooltip's in the middle there. That's um, <laughs> not a very good place for it. Must be a bit of a bug there, I think. I don't think it's supposed to be there. Utilities, okay. And settings for that. Enable weather widget. Enable clock widget. So we've got the dashboard. So that's the dashboard like you have in KDE dashboard. So you've got the same deal there. And you've got your pinned apps here. Um, logout, shutdown and so forth. Lock, logout. So the um, tool tips are a little bit further away once again there. And then you've got tweaks. Nothing to tweak. And then you've got the GNOME dash style. Oh, that's like the activities overview. Okay. And then we can start searching, is it? Yeah, we start searching from there. Okay. Any tweaks? Nothing to tweak there. Then we have the alternative menu, Raven menu style. So I don't get nothing happening there for the Raven menu. Interesting. I'll just move that out of the way. Nothing happening. So the Raven menu style doesn't appear to be working. So there you got the menu theme, the menu settings, menu height, large application icons, category submenus, disable tooltips, enable vertical separator, separator color. So you've got all those options there. Haven't been through those. Not quite sure how they work. You'd have to probably just mess around with them. So you've got pinned apps. So they would have to be pinned apps across the board, I think. You can probably add more apps here. They'll probably come up on the menu itself. So this menu is not working. So let's just go back to menu layout and put it back onto the arc menu and apply that. So there's the three apps there. So I'm assuming, so if we put it on any of the other menus, let's just pick a random menu. 
Um, let's go. Now let's go back to the launcher menus. Dashboard and apply that. So there you've got the three menus. So if we go into the settings, menu settings, shortcuts, uh, pinned apps. So if I was to add another app to that, let's just say we add calculator and cherry tree. Add those. I'm assuming they will come up in there. Well, they haven't. Need to probably restart, do we? Probably need to reselect that, I think. Arc menu settings. So menu layout. So we go to traditional, choose one, apply. Go back to arc menu and apply. No, we still don't have extra apps there, so that's a bit weird. Oh, pinned apps didn't stick. Oh, I didn't press apply, did I? That's why. <laughs> uh, sometimes these things are hidden. Try calculator on that and add. So I clicked add. I thought that was all you needed to do. So that's apply. And let's try that again. So there they are there. Okay. So if we changed that to, let's choose another random uh, another random menu here. Let's go to mint menu style. And looks like there's no pinned apps. that would be favorites, I think. No. Okay, so pinned apps are not on that one. So we need, let's do, uh, yeah, let's go back to the launcher. And let's go um, dashboard. And there's your extra pinned apps there. So yes, it does relate to um, some of the menus if they do have a pinned app. So you've got button appearance. Appearance, you can choose icon, text, icon and text, browse, uh, hidden. You can hide the button. Show arrow. So there's an arrow there. Toggle it off. Browse icons, icon size, you can change the size of the icon. Like so. I think it was 20 default. Color. So you can change the color of the menu. So if you wanted to make it, uh, say, blue, just go lighter blue. And now it's blue. It's pretty handy. Hover color you can change as well. So if we change the hover color to, say, red, so when we hover over, it's red. That's pretty handy. Hover background color. Hmm, it's got white. doesn't look white, though. Oh, no, it's uh, transparent, sorry. Active color. Hmm, not sure what the active color is. Miscellaneous. So you can export your settings. Menu theme presets, export or import menu theme presets, import from file, import theme preset, and about arc menu, a dynamic traditional modern menu for GNOME. GNOME. Arc menu version 49, GNOME version 3.36.4. So display arc menu on dash to panel, main panel, dash to dock. So we can do it on the main panel, can we? Dash to panel currently enabled. So dash to panel. Okay, so what we can do is if we was to turn off, let's go to ex extensions and turn off dash to panel. And then if we went into arc menu settings, then we can show on the main panel. There it is there, left, there. I didn't see that there before, or did I just not see it? and right okay so you can use it with the main panel okay i wasn't sure about that haven't found that setting before but that's pretty handy anyway so you can use it on there so if we um, toggle on the dash to panel again now it's automatically changed to dash to panel so there's all your menu layouts there 
menu theme. Um, you can override the theme. I don't know if that works with the full screen one though. Mm, looks about the same link. Toggle it off. Yeah, that one's about the same. I think it depends what menu you're using for that. So you've got menu heights, left panel width, right panel width. So quite a few tweaks there. Pinned apps we've looked at. Shortcuts. So you've got some shortcuts there. Applications. Oh, so you can mess around with these. You can add more of those as well. That's pretty handy. Session buttons. Oh, you can toggle them on and off. That's really nice. Extra shortcuts, bookmarks, and external devices. So that's pretty handy as well. So that was shortcuts. That's pretty handy. A few things under shortcuts there. And categories. You can toggle on all programs and pinned apps. You can fine tune. So you can fine tune a few things there. You could pretty much just get lost in all of this. <laughs> but uh, as we can see, this uh, arc menu can really change your the look of your desktop completely. So that's it's a very handy menu. So hopefully um, someone continues to um, work on the arc menu because I'm going to be using it. I quite like the um, the full screen. The, the one that comes um, with KDE, which is the, da the dash menu, full screen dash, that's pretty handy. Although you probably don't need that in GNOME because you got this anyway. <laughs> so it's just a bit of a change. So it can, um, you know, if instead of distro hopping, you get a little bit bored, you can change your desktop around pretty much. You could probably... Um, I'm not sure whether you can actually set it to the super modify activities hot corner. Oh, you can choose a hot key. Okay, so you can choose the super key for that. Left super key, let's try that. So, yep, that's working. And then we go none. And then we'll be back to normal gnome stuff. Okay, that's cool. Like that as well. So that is pretty handy. And just quickly while we're here, we've got um, dash. To, uh, this is dash to panel I'm using here. So if you right click that, you can um, open up dash to panel settings. And dash to panel has quite a fair bit of um, settings for that as well. So there's many things you can do with dash to panel as well. So there's um, you could get lost in all these settings as well. <laughs> um, there's quite a fair bit of them. So activities button you can make visible. You can turn that off if you like. So the activities button visible activities button. There it is there. It's the activities button. That's not visible. So when that's grayed out, it's not visible. All these other ones are visible. Desktop button. Let's turn that off. Which one's that one? That's the little desktop button down here, which is like a Windows 7 and 10 style where you click that and show the desktop. System menu, you can choose to turn that off. Um, no, not system. Oh, you can turn system menu off, but uh, I'll leave that on. Um, applications menu. So you can turn applications menu off there if you just want to have your um, Arc menu menu. Then you can change the arc menu to be the default when you press the super key as well. So you can do that as well. So you can make it your own. So there's plenty of options that you can do. Um, let's turn that back on. So also in dash to panel, you can have it on the left hand side like so. You can make it into like a Unity style setup there if you wish. Um, you can have it on the top. You can have it on the bottom, on the right. I think the bottom for me is the best place. You got panel in Tallyhide. So you can turn that on. You can also adjust the settings for that. Only hide the panel when it is obstructed by windows. You can do that. Uh, with focus windows, maximize windows, all windows. That's got focus windows. So you can actually choose many, many layouts and options here. And you could probably, 
if you wanted to, I think, fine tune action. So under about export and import settings. So you can you can export this file. Two reasons, you can use it like it says on a different machine, or if you happen to mess up your settings here, you can import it back in. And pretty much that could be a, you could do, uh, you could export the settings for dash to panel once you've got it all set up. And you could do many different settings, to be honest, I would have to think. And then you could go to your arc menu settings and you could export um, I'm pretty sure there was an export in here somewhere. Uh, miscellaneous, export to file. So you could do that as well. You could export theme presets because I've changed the theme here. I think that's what that would mean or I'm not quite sure. Menu theme presets. So you've got arc menu settings and menu theme presets. What's that mean? In the menu theme section menu theme so oh that's just that one there so that's just the the color of the that would be the gnome user theme i believe so um any anything that comes up on here like options here this color here it's the yeah this color here will be different if you override that with a different well you're not going to see it with that one so if we go back to the original arc menu you will see that this menu will be a different color, slightly darker to this one here. So it's probably got the arc menu um, style or the arc menu color, which is very similar, which is that darker color. Current menu theme preset, arc menu theme, dark blue theme, light blue theme. So they got, oh, they got the pre presets here. Right, do we need to apply that? Yes, we do. So it's blue now. Oh, there we go. So you've got some other presets there as well. Um, light blue, apply that. Interesting, okay, so you can override the theme or you can, let's put it back on the arc menu theme and apply that. that one and we'll toggle that back off and there we go and we're back to this pop os theme color but anyway that's um the arc menu and a little bit of dash to panel as well so i hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it interesting and informative and thanks for watching